hey everyone welcome back to my channel so this video was based on a specific request and i think it's worth mentioning and i know this topic is very confusing uh, i hope by the end of this video that this should be easier for you i'm gonna do uh, two questions together and i'd like to give special thanks to david lamb with helping uh, for helping with the content of this video so let's get started all right, so here's a question, guys, to show you the difference. A kids control study is conducted to assess the association between alcohol consumption and lung cancer. So we got 100 patients lung cancer and 100 patients without 100 without lung cancer, so 100 controls, and ask them about their past alcohol consumption. So what we found is that those who have lung cancer used to consume more alcohol than those who do not. So we found that alcohol consumption is strongly associated with lung cancer with a high odds ratio. However, the researchers then divided the study subjects into two groups, smokers and non-smokers, and then found that in the end there's really no association between alcohol consumption and lung cancer. So we thought, based on this, that alcohol is the exposure that leads to lung cancer and that there's really a true association. When in reality, those people who drink more are actually more likely to be smokers and that there is really no true association between alcohol consumption and lung cancer. It's because of smoking, which is the true risk factor. So when we thought about that, we divided the subjects into smokers and non-smokers and then ask them ask the smokers alone about their past alcohol consumption we found no difference like in the numbers of lung cancer here and there the odds ratio is one there's no difference there's no association um, and in those who are non-smokers we asked about their past alcohol consumption we found no difference and so the difference is eliminated when we stratify by the confounder, which is here, smoking is the true risk factor. Of course, there is more cases of lung cancer in smokers than in non-smokers, but alcohol has really nothing to do with lung cancer. It's just because those who smoke are more likely to drink as well. So for something to be a confounder, it has to be associated with both the exposure and the outcome. Smoking is associated with alcohol use and at the same time it's a true risk factor for lung cancer, the outcome. Another example of this would be we thought that ice cream consumption leads to more sunburns. But in reality this is a false association, this is not true. It's because people who consume ice cream a lot are more likely to do so in hot temperatures at the beach, and it's the hot temperature that leads to some burns. So hot temperature is associated with both the exposure, that's the ice cream consumption, and the number of sunburns. So with confounding, guys, there is no true association. It's a false association, and it's going to be eliminated if we match the subjects or if we stratify and match for the confounding variable. This is going to be made a lot easier if we look at another example which is effect modification. So let's see. A new estrogen receptor agonist being evaluated for the treatment of postmenopausal symptoms. A prospective study shows that the drug increases the risk of DVT in treated women who smoke compared to untreated women who smoke. So this question, guys, is very confusing to some. And I will tell you that the examiner was actually very careful in, in uh, making this question because he didn't say that the treatment leads to DVT right away. In, re in fact, he said it leads to more DVT cases in those who treated women who smoke compared to untreated women who smoke. So we did match by smoking status. Only within the smokers, those who took the pill got more DVT than those who did not. So 
we have actually matched by smoking. So despite doing the study among smokers only, we found that those who took the pill still got more than those who did not. So in reality, there is a true association. The pill does lead to DVT. It's a true association, but it leads to DVT more in people who smoke because in, in non-smokers, there is no increased risk of DVT. This is something else. With confounding, there would have been no difference to begin with. It would, it would have been a false association. So, the relative risk here of 1.7, p-value 0.01 means it's below 0.05, which means it is significant, which means that the drug does lead to DVT, right? Uh, however, in non-smokers, there is no association. Let's see about that. So, we thought that the drug leads to DVT, but we know that smoking could be a confounder, so we matched by smoking status among the women who smoke, we saw whether there is more cases of DVT with taking the pill than without, and in reality, there was. More, um, more smokers who took the pill got DVT than those who did not. So the pill does lead to DVT, and the results are significant, as you can see. The p-value is below 0.05. On the other hand, among the non-smokers, and we found that those who took the pill and those who did not take the pill, there's really no difference in the number of DVT cases. So there is no difference if you are a non-smoker, whether you took the pill or you don't take the pill, there is really no difference in the numbers of DVT here. As you can see, it's almost one relative risk and the p-value is high, which means it's not significant. However, if you are a smoker, there is a difference. What that means is that the pill does lead to DVT. There is a true association, as we've seen here. However, it depends. If you ask me, does this pill lead to DVT? I'm going to tell you. If you're a smoker, then yes. If you're not a smoker, then not really. So what that means is that the results depend on a third variable, which is smoking here, is an effect modifier. It modifies the true association. Contrast this with confounding where in both cases there is no difference, which means alcohol has nothing to do with lung cancer. Whether you are a smoker or not, alcohol has no association. But with effect modification, there is a true association more with one group than the other. It's modified by another variable, an effect modifier. Smoking modifies the effect of the pill on DVT. Let's take another case of effect modification. So if you ask me, does aspirin lead to, lead to Rye syndrome? I'm going to tell you it depends. Are you a child? Then yes. If you are an adult, then no. Does that mean that aspirin doesn't lead to Rye syndrome? No. Aspirin does lead to, but age here is an effect modifier. Age here is a third variable that decides whether you're going to be affected by this true association or not. Had it been a confounder, this wouldn't have been the case. There will be no true association regardless of age. But in reality, there is a true association only if you are a child, which is age here is an effect modifier. It modifies the, the true effect. I hope this makes sense, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. All the best, guys.